Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Game Vortex coming to you from my portable studio. Well, actually, it's more of a vlog entry. Uh, to tell you in general what's been going on, first of all, I've made about three videos and then my computer died. So I just had it replaced yesterday. So I'm gonna get back on track. I'm trying to recover the files because the thing that, that was gone is the hard drive in my laptop. So. I'm not sure if I can recover those videos, but it doesn't matter. I've made a review for Horizon Zero Dawn that was there as well. A couple of videos about Nintendo Switch. So now that the Nintendo Switch has came out, uh, it's been around three weeks, or oh, three weeks, sorry. It's been around, yeah, a week since it came out. And since it released on the third, a friend of mine went to Japan. He's coming back this Friday and he's bringing a Nintendo Switch. Not for me because I didn't buy it. Uh, not convinced yet but we're gonna go to his place and play I guess Zelda because there isn't much else to play I told him not to buy the one to switch games because that's just ridiculous I mean every single reviewer said that it's not worth the money it should have been a free game so let's go through some good stuff and bad stuff I've done so much research on this matter right now and I cannot wait to dig in and to actually trying the console out and playing it so the first the good things uh, the sales indicate that it's the best-selling console in Nintendo's history, or at least close to that. Uh, there are no concrete figures, but apparently it's sold out everywhere. Since approximately, I would say, they produced 2 million units at launch. I mean, at least that's what they said uh, a couple of months before the launch, so I assume that's been sold in the UK. 80,000 units, which doesn't sound like a lot, but maybe it is a lot for them. It's, it'll be interesting to see. now. I was always convinced that it's going to sell very good in the very beginning. That was the story with Wii U and it was the same story with the 3DS uh, and the Wii, but the Wii kept the momentum going, if you don't remember. It's been very difficult to get for months and months, but it was cheaper as well and it was a different kind of a device. This is a little bit different. It doesn't have that many games, but it's got this hype built in around it that it's something new and Nintendo is innovating again so it'll be interesting to see I think like it remains to be seen once the people go through Legend of Zelda what are they gonna play next Bomberman I am Setsuna a lot of games don't even have the release dates that were announced during the conference hopefully hopefully in May on oh no, way in June when the E3 starts they're gonna come out and they just say there's coming that's coming that's coming that's coming so that would be great if that happens but if they come out and they don't really have anything else to show apart from whatever they've showed already then that's gonna be a problem and we could easily see a big drop-off later on in terms of sales because same thing as I said happened with 3ds they were forced to slash the price down uh, literally a couple of weeks after launch uh, to make that thing sell and luckily with a strong support and a price card the 3ds succeeded they sold over 50 million units of those things and it's a great console so that that's a good part uh, the Legend of Zelda reviews are amazing it's the highest rated game on the Metacritic I haven't played it yet and to be honest the last Legend of Zelda played it was on the NES or SNES I don't remember uh, so I mean, I had that each scratch by the horizon, but I'm very curious because it looks beautiful. And there's also some kind of a, if you watch the channel called The No, there was been a news about the reviewers getting paid to give it a high score. But from what I've actually read and, and talked about, this game legitly is good. Right? I mean, it might not be for everyone, but it's good. So that's another good thing. Uh, online service for now. I mean, that, that's pretty much everything that I have to say. The screen is good. I mean, I've, I've seen it in person already at the shop. Uh, I've touched it, but I haven't really played it. I've looked through the menu, nothing there at the gate. It's back bare bones. It's just game, games, games. Power bank charging doesn't work very well because well, we're shifting to the bad things already because it needs a 50, 15 volts uh, at 5 amps. So. A lot of power banks don't charge that thing or they charge it so slow that it takes day to charge the whole thing. So you need to make sure that you're getting a good power bank that can actually output that much voltage for the console. What else do we have there? Now there's been a compilation of videos and reports of people getting defect units and other things. It ranges from very mild things like app crashes, game crashes, when it says this app 
quit unexpectedly or crashed. So I mean that that that's mild things, you know. Uh, a bit more severe is when the console just freezes when they play Legend of Zelda or other games sometimes just in the menu just completely stop responding. There are more severe cases where the console is emitting like a beeping sound non-stop, like a low high-pitched sound. Um, and there's no way to stop it apart from hard reboot the system. Also, what else is that? Screen ranges. I mean, the problems from the screen is ranged from what I've seen from some kind of a artifacts during uh, play of Zelda to completely screen going black and white or red for some reason. The dock is the biggest issue here. 90 bucks, and there's a guy who just took it apart, just popped one cover. There's one flipping small kind of a looking main board with two cables and that's it that thing it probably cost a tenner to make if that if that it's insane that they have the the, the balls to charge ninety dollars for that thing ninety dollars this should have been a not more than than 20 30 bucks then you can get more of them but of course they need to make as much money as possible straight away just in case that thing doesn't work out again like the Wii U did. 90 bucks and if you look at the Angry Joe's video and other people's video, the way you dock it, there's so little space between the screen and the actual dock that it actually scratches the screen. You need to put screen protectors. The docking mechanism is not like you would expect because I've actually tried it in the shop. It's not like you just slide it in like it's on the rails and then it just clicks into place. It doesn't. You just kind of slide it and leave it there. And a lot of times I've noticed like in the shop, like maybe too many people have done it, but even the reports of people done it six, seven times, it loses the connection with the TV. That light that's supposed to be uh, white, if I'm not mistaken, that it's connected to the dock. That thing just goes on and off, on and off. Another person reported that their kid put the console the other way around and that break the system, that broke it. Which is extremely interesting for me because it's using a USB-C and if I'm not mistaken, this is similar style like lightning adapter that can be inserted both ways, but maybe the dock is designed differently or the innards are slightly different, like that, that's, that's, that's disturbing. Because you would expect that the kids will have access to the system, right? Why can you only put the system on the right side of the TV? Because that's the way the cables are plugged in into that thing. Unless you really want to bend it and you'll break your flimsy dock. The, I've noticed as well the kickstand is super, super crap. It's, I know, it will, it will break for sure. Probably within the first month or so. There are no streaming services today. There was an interview. Don't remember, it was a Polygon or someone that posted it. And Reggie said that we already talked to Amazon, Hulu and all like, and we will have to report something at some time in the future. I mean, you should have done that before because once the people are done playing with Zelda, unless they want to pay so much for the Bomberman or for a $20 port from the Xbox, that Super Street Fighter that actually ends up costing 40 now, there's not going to be much else to do and if people enjoy spending their time with Switch in bed or maybe when they're traveling, why not let them watch something on this console? That, that's, that's puzzling to me. Now, I'm not going to buy this. I, they have to show me what do I need. From the games that I've seen, Bomberman, I'm not paying that much for it. It's just a Bomberman. I've played that. I can always go back to the original one. Uh, Super Street Fighter, too expensive. Played that on Xbox One already. Have that. So, what else is there? Zelda, yes, this is a game that I want to play, but I might just take my friend's Switch to play the, the Zelda in the meantime, when it's free, or I maybe use the Wii U for that. I don't have it, but I can borrow it from a person. What else is there? There's nothing else, to be honest. I'm kind of puzzled of what else can I do on the console. Uh, yes, there is a Mario Kart coming that. I mean, I've played that on the Wii U at my friend's place. That might be something worth picking up, but the thing is, none of these games are worth spending $300. I'm a big PlayStation fanboy, and I like Xbox as well, but there isn't a game that would make me buy a console from scratch, from zero, by spending that much money. I don't have a PS4 Pro. Why? Because I don't see a reason for it. Yes, there are a lot of bonuses to it, but no, not yet. They have to show me something that will wow me, but for now, nothing does. 
And the same thing with the switch. It's too much of an investment financially when there is no guarantee what is coming there down the line. And why do I need to buy a console when I actually play a game even though it's 10 out of 10 masterpiece, which is great. And then I just let it sit there until Mario Odyssey come out in six months. And what about after that? That's the biggest problem. And I want to know from any one of you who actually bought the console, what do you think? And if you haven't bought one, do you have one pre-ordered? Because apparently they're all out of stock. I'm very curious to read your comments and I want to get this discussion going. We can, uh, don't, don't get angry at me, I'm not bashing anything. I actually want Nintendo to succeed because a healthy, vibrant Nintendo is very important for the competition. So it pushes Sony and Microsoft to respond, to innovate, which they actually did. The PlayStation in Europe uh, reduced the price of the PlayStation 4 now to $199. It's even cheaper than the Switch now, which is amazing. There's a good chance that the PS4 Pro eventually will drop down the price uh, to become the, the, the that tier of $399 that we're looking for, $299. So yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I really enjoyed making this video for you today. And if you like this video, please subscribe to this channel there or there. Leave the comments below. I'll read it and apply to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. And I'll see you all on the next episode of Game Vortex.